going to talk about Bitmoji classrooms. And the Bitmoji classroom is a trend in education that has emerged really in the last year. I mean, they existed before that, but they've really become a thing in the past year as we've had to be faced with some remote teaching at different times for extended periods of time or maybe just for a few days, depending on the circumstance. But what the Bitmoji classroom has served to do is bring a version of a classroom into the homes and the lives of our students who are not physically present at school for whatever reason. And it's been a really wonderful tool with the younger children to help them navigate some of the things that we would want them to do in a day in, a, in sort of a pictorial manner. So this slide deck contains 20 classrooms and I've filled them with a few items and then in addition to those items there's almost 350 more images that can be accessed as well. So we'll just put this on a thumbnail view and so you can see that I've got 20 different classroom layouts and then we've got a whole bunch of accessories as well that you can use to fill your classrooms. And beyond this, you can certainly use the Google image search as well. And I'm gonna walk you through how to do some of these things. So let's go back to the editable view. And the first three slides, the only thing that moves in those rooms is just the Bitmoji. You can add more into those slides as you see fit, but for my templates, slides one through three have only the Bitmoji that moves. So she can move around and you know obviously I can shrink her down not sure why I would do that and make her large again but the background is set so the background on this slide is not going to move at all but the bitmoji can and you should be taking her out and putting in your own bitmoji now some of you may be thinking okay but I don't have a bitmoji well that's a problem that is actually quite easily solved and so if you go to bitmoji.com, that's the, the website for the Bitmoji app. Now to create a Bitmoji, you're going to have to download the Bitmoji app onto your phone. So you can get it from the App Store or Google Play by going to bitmoji.com, or of course you can search for it on the App Store of your phone, whether you're running an Apple phone or an Android phone. So once you've created your Bitmoji, then what you probably want to do is head on over to the Chrome store and we'll do a quick search for Bitmoji and you'll find there is a Bitmoji extension and you can see I've already got it installed. So up across the top here, here's my Bitmoji extension and if I click on it, I have access to all of the different poses and images that are associated to the Bitmoji. Now there are lots of ones in there that are just the person standing like here's a robot one this one was some sort of a trench coat I'm not sure if I'm like selling uh, stolen watches there or what that's all about we got a breakdance one but if I'm wanting just kind of the plain poses if I search the word pose in my bitmoji library it really does just bring up the the images of standing or walking and there are not very many accessories with them these ones here Bitmoji through the extension you can type anything in and it will create a few Bitmojis that you could pick from that's got your word with it. So it'll give you a selection of possible Bitmojis with your word there. So just so you know what those are all about. But if I just go pose there's the images of me standing and doing all these other things that I've used in that classroom. So if I'm going to just right click on her, then you'll copy image. I'm going to come over to my classroom and I can do the right click paste or I can do the control V paste. And now there's two of me in my classroom. And the beautiful thing with the Bitmojis is they do come with a transparent background. So really simple to put the little cartoon version of yourself onto your slide. Now, I could take the text box and I could put the announcement for my class this morning. Good morning. And I'll change the color. I'll make that maybe a, a light yellow, kind of a chalkboard kind of look. 
first thing today, then, and I could give my class an agenda on a screen that looks like a classroom. Really intuitive for kids, especially for the little guys, if you can make your Bitmoji classroom kind of reflect the way you do things in your actual classroom. So the first three, as I mentioned, the background doesn't move. Now this one I've done on a fairly realistic looking background, but the Bitmoji still moves around. So we've got kind of a the half, half reality, half cartoon look going there. And then the third one is much more like a library. And again, only the Bitmoji moves around. Now you can bring other things onto these classrooms, absolutely. And you can use from the end, the content at the end of the slide deck here, some of these accessories, or you can use a Google search and I am going to show you how to do that. So after the first three, then we move into a bit of a hybrid scenario where some things move, but not everything. And we can see in the speaker notes that everything on this slide can move except for the wall, the clock, bulletin boards, and the ceiling lights. So sure enough, bulletin board doesn't move, clock doesn't move, but if I wanted to move the bitmoji, she moves. Now, she's behind now this mat, and if I wanted her to be more like on top of the mat, I'm gonna need to switch the order because she is pretty clearly, if I drag her down, she's behind the mat, and that's not gonna work. So, I can either move the mat backwards, or I can move the girl forwards. So I'm gonna right click, now, if you're on a Chromebook, that's your double press I'm on a Chromebook and I'm going to choose order and I'm going to bring her to the front. That way she's in front of everything, whether I put her in front of the briefcase or the shelves or the chair. She is completely at the very front of everything. So let's move her over here. Maybe we can go one foot on the mat, one foot off the mat. That works. The chair, of course, can be moved. So can the floor lamp. So can the shelving unit. And as we pull through to more and more of these different templates, you have the ability to click in and type words and you can change the words on any of these. You can change the font. So if I want to go with bangers font and let's maybe go with a bit of a blue color, I can do that. And if I wanted to bring in some more stuff, I can also do that. So we see here that on this one, it's only the Bitmoji in the chair, so I can move the chair even partway off screen if I wanted to, and I can even crop out the part that hangs over. Oops, let's get that to crop, not shrink. And then I press enter. Now we only see the part of the chair that was there before. I can always, I can hit the undo and I can undo that and I can have the full, full chair back. Let's take the crop off and we'll just put that chair back in. So as you scroll through, by the time we get to this one, we are at the place where there really isn't a whole lot of accessories in this classroom. So you can add some in of your own selection or you can copy in from those slides towards the end. So let's do an image search. So I wanna insert an image and I'm gonna search the web. Now one of the cool things here is that Google, because they have their roots in search, if I wanted to search for a desk to put in here, it is going to search only images that I am allowed to reuse because Google can tell that I'm going to be using this in a set of Google Slides, therefore I am automatically reusing the image. So it is going to apply the search filters that give me only stuff I can reuse. So if I do a search for desk, I'm going to see a lot of photos because Google Images has a lot of photos. And the challenge with photos is if I, if I were to take this one and bring it on, it probably has a white background. Oh, I got lucky on that one. That one has a transparent background. So I could totally use that here. If I wanted to turn it around so it's angled the other way, I'm gonna pull it over top of itself and it's gonna give me a slash here when I get to the correct size. So there we go, I've got my desk now in the corner of my classroom, kind of right at the door where people come in. Now, if I wanted to get a chair, I can also, of course, do a search for that. And like I mentioned before, a lot of these are gonna come in with background on them, which isn't what we want. So I'm gonna give you the word that's gonna bring up the majority having a transparent background, and the word is vector. So if I search for a vector graphic of a chair, 
the odds are that these chairs are going to have transparent backgrounds. So let's take this one. Now I can drag it like I've been doing or I can click insert down here. And when it comes on, sure enough, it's got a transparent background. I'll shrink that down so it kind of works with the desk a little better. So there we go. We've got a chair and a desk and their matching is approximately that that we would expect in most schools to older older um, furniture items. So now I can come down to these other ones and let's maybe grab this shelf set. So I'm just going to copy it, which is control C or you can do the right click copy, whichever is more comfortable to you. And then I'm going to come back over to here and I can go control V or right click paste and I'm going to shrink this little shelving unit down and now I need to put it behind myself on the bean bag. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to order it, and I'm just going to send it to the back. And now I can drag it a little further behind. So now I've got me sitting on the floor, I've got this shelving unit, I've got my desk there, and maybe I want to come down here and get something for the wall as well. How about, how about this chalkboard? So let's go control C to copy it, let's come back up here, let's go control V to paste it, and then let's make it fit the designated space and I can center it by using that little red line that just appeared and now this is looking much more like a classroom. I kind of feel like I should maybe have a little rug on the floor here so let's grab this little round rug we'll copy it and we'll come back and we'll paste it in and then I think I'm probably in pretty good shape on that classroom. There we go. Let's paste that in. Get that kind of maybe put it little bit out of the sunbeam. Might shrink it down just a wee bit, make it fit the space a little better. And now that is starting to look much more like a classroom. Now the question might be, okay, so this is all well and good, like they're cute, they look like a classroom, but what do you actually do with them? Well, this is where they get kind of interesting because you can start to embed websites or activities or things that you would want your kids to be doing in a school day, especially when we're doing the remote learning. And so we could put some stuff on the chalkboard that you want to link. Like maybe I want to link some of this to some math manipulatives. I could totally do that. The other thing I could do, you know what, let's put in, let's put a map on here as well. So let's go insert an image. We're going to search again and I want a world map. And this screen might be, you know, things I have my kids do when they're done their regular work. So let's maybe grab this map of the world here. Let's insert it. And I'm going to hang that over top of the teacher desk. Now, there's a website out there. It's called The True Size. And it's really a neat website because what it lets you do is it lets you take a country and drag it around to compare the size. So there's India, which has come off the map right over here. Here's the USA, which has come from right here. And as they sit right now, I'm left, and, and this has been a lifelong misconception for me, I'm left with the impression that India is a lot smaller than the USA. But if I drag the USA here, you see how it increases as I get closer to the tops and the bottoms of the map, how it warps it like the Mercator projection warps? Well, there's my USA, here's India. Let's lay them over top of each other and let's see just how much different they are. And I've got to tell you, they're a lot closer in size than I was expecting. I thought it would take about five Indias to make a USA. It looks like it only takes about two. So what I could do is I could paste this link. So I'm gonna copy the link, I'm gonna come over here and on this map, I'm gonna put a link to it and so I'm gonna paste the true size. So this screen might be where my kids go. This is the classroom they go to when they're done all their other stuff. So what we wanna to do to make this totally interactive is we wanna put it on present mode. And now if I click on this map, that's gonna take me over to the true size where I can do this little activity that I'm already familiar with because my teacher showed us how to do it. I just have to click around on here and find the things I want to do. There are loads of ideas that you could use for these. 
um, one of the things I was thinking of doing is, is to build a shelving unit in a classroom, maybe, and I was thinking I might use this one, and put some little math manipulatives on there, put a spinner on there, and put a dice on there, and some of the other manipulatives that I might use in a classroom. And maybe I wanna have a shelf full of math manipulatives on a slide. And as I'm teaching, that I could just pull that slide up to use my math manipulatives rather than fumbling around from website to website. There is bigger shelving units that can be accessed. Uh, this one's got the handle still on it. This one doesn't. Lots of, lots of ideas we could do with it. Um, for your little guys, with your calendar and your calendar corner, you could do up a little corner of a classroom. You know, maybe we take off these these posters and we put up a calendar and then behind that I could put the link to my class calendar so if a parent is wanting to check for something and they ask the child where's your class calendar the kid can find it easy peasy behind the clock maybe I have an activity about telling time and I might have some worksheets in these drawers that have to do with literacy because those drawers have some letters on them the, the sky's the limit. Really, that's the point here, is you can do anything you want. Now, equally, I could change the pictures out inside of these frames. And so maybe I'll do an insert image, and we're gonna search the web, and let's make one of them Einstein. So we want a picture of, of Albert Einstein. Now, I'd like one that might kind of fit the portrait shape, but this is such a classic picture. But I think I will bring that one in. Now, obviously it's too big, so that's perfect. We'll bring it over here. We'll kind of fit it onto the frame. And we'll just adjust the sizing. So now I have a picture of Albert Einstein in my Bitmoji classroom. So the bottom line here is the sky's the limit. Now you can put whatever you want into these spaces. You can change them as much as you want. You can adjust them. You can use them. And maybe even it can spur some creativity for some ideas for some other things you might want to do in your classroom. But if you're a teacher of the younger kiddos, the Bitmoji classroom can be a really great way to keep them engaged even at a distance. So this is just kind of a surface introduction to the concept of the Bitmoji classroom. Thanks for watching.